what are we doing? What are we doing when we write about things? What are we doing when we write about things that we already know? Well, technically we probably ought to, if we want to maintain a semblance of intelligence, I suppose, but what's underneath that? Okay, well, what if I pose the question like this? What are we doing when we let go, when we write because we want to know? Just follow me here. You can probably present a fairly good argument that there's a clear and definite correlation between thinking and writing. And maybe some of you are screaming at me right now saying that thinking is writing, but let's just err on the side of being cautious. So if there could be a correlation between thinking and writing, what are we doing when we say, yeah, I've got this complex problem I've been wrestling with. I'm just thinking it through. And then what usually happens after that? Maybe it's in the middle of the night or in the middle of singing in the shower and all of a sudden, all of those ideas come together for that epiphany, that aha moment, right? Huh. I've been keeping tabs on, on how everyone's doing in the shared graph and the struggle seems to center around this idea I want to explore. See, if I asked you if you knew the answer to the question, what is two plus two? I bet you could answer that. And I know it seems banal and pretty patronizing, but follow me here. What happens if every question that I ask you is reinforcing this idea of getting the right answer? And what if we are basically training ourselves to seek out what we already know? If I know that the answer is four, then I get praised for that. So fast forward to now. And when I ask you to respond with what resonated with you, that probably feels a bit weird. I mean, who asks that? But maybe this whole thing is all about reminding you that you do have a unique voice and I'm just letting you rediscover it. Just something to think about. You know, people often ask or people usually question, why Rome? And why all the hoopla over this note-taking tool? And my response usually goes over their head or bounces off their hands as they're covering their ears. I'm kidding. But here's my answer. You ready for it? I choose Rome because each block is in essence an entire idea, wholly encapsulating and infinitely expandable, capable of holding more than one piece of data at the granularity of the block. And that's gonna go right over your head too. Because everyone that's taught you how to use Rome has taught you how to use it like every other note-taking tool. Or if you haven't been taught anything, you just haven't seen a tool do what I'm gonna get you to do with it. Or let me say that again, what you are doing with it. And remember, if I drew out the most visually stunning picture, you still wouldn't get it because even a Monet couldn't paint the summit that you're climbing. Let's do this. Let me walk you through uh, this week's last exercise. Okay, the usual flow. Open up your page, fire off the template for day 14, current time stamp, there we go. Now let's scroll down to day 10 again. Now, we already processed the one above, but now let's hold the shift button and click on the bullet point to the left of the response. Now it's in the sidebar, perfect. Now scroll back up to the top on the main screen and in the sidebar, yeah, let's highlight everything that we wrote a couple of days ago and bring that underneath the fleeting notes tag. And if you're a power user, you could probably do this in so many different ways, but I'm a fan of clicking and dragging, okay? Nice. Now let's go ahead and click on that X so we can clear it from the sidebar now, I like to zoom into the block by clicking on the bullet point since it centers my focus at the task at hand. Now that we have a much larger capture of this fleeting note, let's walk through some things, okay? If you click on the link that is on the same block as the reference notes tag, that'll open the source material into a new tab. And if you expand the bullet point, for reference notes, you have some space for more information. And if you collapse the bullet point, I'll expand the bullet point, collapse, collapse. Okay, you get it. It's gone. It's out of sight, out of mind, and it's only there when you need it. Now, I do like having the screenshot of the paragraph where the exact capture happened. So let's go ahead and hold shift and click on that bullet point to open it up in the sidebar. Remember, it's just the precise moment when that aha happened. Not the whole paragraph, but the context is there if you need it. Now let's collapse this all again and take a look at the fleeting notes that you wrote. 
Now, this exercise might take some time and it isn't necessarily how much work you'll need to do yourself when you're processing your own fleeting notes, but let's make you work a little, or in this case, a lot. I have, let's count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have 11, I have 11 different blocks. But let's do this first though. If you've indented as you've captured, like I did here, let's bring them all back so they're all siblings. You can do this by holding shift and hitting tab to unindent each one of those blocks. That's perfect. Now we've got 11 ways that I can add more to this fleeting note that I captured days ago to fill out exactly what this means to me. Now, what I'd like for you to do is this. With your source material on the sidebar, zoomed into the actual fleeting note you captured, let's begin processing this. By just extending out each top level parent block, take your time. Let yourself explore through your writing. Get lost if you want, but because you have another parent block right below, you can always find your way back. And when you're done with that, and you feel like you've abstracted and wrung out every last bit that you could from this one sentence, by the way, then go ahead and summarize at the top where the fleeting notes tag is. In my experience, you'll know when to stop. And you'll probably know when you're ready to move on because you may end up with something like this, 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 or this. Yes. Now, to wrap things up, if I could relate this whole process to something a bit more practical. Maybe this way of writing in Rome could be a way to induce one of those jumping out of the shower aha moments. You know, if there's a connection between thinking and writing, and writing and thinking, and if we can have an aha when we don't think, couldn't we have an aha when we don't think while writing? Hmm. I'll see you in the guided writing exercise.